And I have Brian Horn from Dive Curacao with us this evening. Brian is a, a longtime veteran and extremely, extremely knowledgeable about the island of Curacao. Uh, Curacao is, is a, to me, a secret gem. A number of divers know about Curacao. A number do not, surprisingly. A lot of us have heard about the uh, liquor blue Curacao, but that's about it. Um, but both above and below, I think that Curacao is a fantastic gem. I personally think that it is a beautiful marriage of the Caribbean and Europe uh, and has just so much to offer. So I'm not here to talk about Curacao. Brian is, so I am going to turn him over to you. Welcome, Brian. Hey, thanks, Cheryl. Great to see everybody out tonight. Um, yeah, and we can still dream. Uh, that's a definite. Tonight, uh, we're just going to do a, uh, a short presentation uh, about, uh, about Curacao. And we're going to highlight some of the, or the 10 best uh, reasons to dream about Curacao and come to Curacao. But most importantly, um, I would invite you to, uh, you know, throw your questions up throughout the presentation. And then at the end, uh, we're going to do a uh, Q&A. And then we can address all those uh, questions uh, throughout. So I hope you enjoy the presentation. We've got a couple of uh, videos to present as well. And uh, so let's get to it. We're going to start with one, pre one video now. Um, and that's just about uh, Curacao. Just to get you thinking. Brian, did your video have sound? Because if it does, we can't hear any sound. If it doesn't, that's okay, but just to let you know there's no sound going on. Oh, there's no sound? No. Um, okay. If it's just music, you can hum or sing instead. <laughs> 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 but just to let you know, the video's working, it's a little choppy, but there wasn't any mute, any sound. Is there a way to... I'm sorry to say this during the presentation, but is there a way to get the music going? Sorry. Uh, <laughs> All right. So do you have, um, maybe just click on the video itself and see, is it playing on your end? No, I paused it. No, was the music playing on your end before you paused it? Okay. So... Did you check the boxes when you shared your screen? Uh, me. All right, let me try this. Sorry, guys. Um, Brian, go ahead and click share screen one more time. And on the bottom left hand side, there's two little check boxes that say share sound and optimize for video clip. Make sure both those are checked and then try again. Sing along. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> Okay. Somebody unmute Paul and let Paul start start the sing song. <laughs> there we go. That's working. with that. So let's just dive into the uh, top 10 reasons. So the first one, uh, there's absolutely plenty of reasons to come to Curacao, but there's also plenty of things to do. You know, generally speaking, uh, Curacao is a, a very affordable destination uh, to come to. There's lots and lots of things to do. 
uh, on Curacao. And there's really generally no good way to, for anybody to do it. Everybody can make it their own experience um, in the, whether it be sunset cocktails, uh, whether it's touring the city, hitting the, uh, the national parks, um, seeing turtles, uh, doing fishing trips, and, you know, lots of shopping around, uh, around Curacao. The number nine reason is really one of my favorites, and we're going to touch on this a little bit more uh, as we go through, and that's really uh, sustainable and responsible uh, tourism. As everybody knows, uh, it's our shared responsibility uh, to conserve and possibly contribute to the natural resources, um, such as our oceans and our dive sites, so that we can benefit future generations. And it's very, very important that uh, our oceans are conserved. Um, as I mentioned right here, uh, it's an important component to our tourism product here on Curacao. So that doesn't, um, that incorporates everything from coral restoration <clears throat> to lionfish uh, hunting. Um, also, it's not just about the hunting. Uh, and I underline that is that it has become a sustainable industry here on Curacao. It is now uh, served in restaurants. It is uh, available in supermarkets. It's one of those uh, things that we never thought was gonna be possible um, when the first lionfish was uh, initially pulled out. I think it was in 2019. No, sorry, 2000 and I can't remember the exact date, um, but it was roughly about 15, 14 years ago. 13 years ago. Um, and we really never thought it was gonna be possible to turn it into a sustainable industry. So now it is. Now it is something that uh, divers and uh, the community is profiting by, uh, by serving it, by tasting it, by hunting it. And it's putting uh, some dollars in people's pockets, but most importantly, it's uh, uh, creating clean reefs. And as we move through into the next slide here, you can see some uh, real life examples of coral restoration that we do. Um, not only Dive Curacao participates with coral restoration, but also the community supports it and as well as the, uh, the dive tourists that come to the island. Uh, they get involved and they go out onto the nurseries, they help clean, they help uh, uh, outplant. Um, it's really a, a really cool process uh, to get involved with. So if you happen to be in Curacao, um, I would definitely recommend uh, you participating in the coral restoration projects. As you can see here, this is actually the Lion's Dive House Reef. Um, after about uh, four years of outplanting, uh, these are staghorn corals that have been outplanted and you can see the growth that is there. Um, and these are all from fragments no bigger than about this big. <clears throat> Pretty amazing stuff. Curacao is actually a year-round vacation uh, destination. Uh, it's pretty much a, a question that comes up on a regular basis uh, that, um, you know, is Curacao, you know, free of hurricanes and what's the temperature like and so on and so forth. Well, I can pretty much guarantee you in the entire time that I've been here, which is pretty much close to 14 years, I think, uh, we've never had a hurricane here on Curacao. We've had some close calls. We've had some tropical storms, uh, but we are definitely outside of the hurricane belt, uh, 12 degrees north latitude, um, right next to Bonaire and Aruba. So it's very, very uh, good conditions year round. This is, a, right now, um, this is a great reason to come to Curacao. Not really, probably. Uh, reason number seven is it's a budget destination in normal times. Um, the reason that I, we put this in here is because of the fact that, you know, Curacao is really accessible from the United States, um, also from Canada. Up in Ohio, you can scooch across the, uh, the, U.S. border up into Toronto, so you can get direct flights from Air Canada 
uh, WestJet, Sunwing, um, also American Airlines, JetBlue, United Airlines. Um, they all conveniently fly to Curacao. Uh, American Airlines, I think, uh, in normal times, uh, is flying, I think, two times a day out of Miami. Um, so, and that's pretty good. Also, JetBlue, United Airlines is new, uh, but these are, you know, you can fly inexpensively to, to Curacao. And this is the reason that we put that in there. So don't hold that against me right now. But this is one of my favorites is that, yeah, it's a must have destination. Uh, the fact is that Curacao has got over 70 dive sites um, that are listed uh, across the island from east to west, from Klein Curacao all the way up into West Point. There's always a dive site um, available, whether it's shore diving or, or boat diving. Um, it's just an amazing uh, destination to come to. And here is just an example of all the dive sites uh, that are listed on our convenient map. Um, so, I mean, you've got lots and lots of dive sites that are all the way, all the way through uh, the southern side of, southwestern side of Curacao, or southwestern, southeastern, all the way to Klein. And there's probably more that I haven't listed, but these are the most popular uh, dive sites. I'm sure I could find more as well, um, but I think 70 plus, I think 76 dive sites I have listed and there is uh, not a bad one to be found. One of the most popular dive sites on Curacao is one of the reasons why you should come to Curacao and check out the Superior Producer. It's not always available uh, because the, it's located right outside the mega pier, uh, but definitely in times like this, it is definitely accessible. Um, but more often than not, um, it is accessible uh, sporadically. But it's one of those dive sites that you need to get to if you happen to be here on, on Curacao. It's consistently ranked as one of the best dive sites in the Caribbean. And with USA Today, uh, they've ranked it as one of the best, I think the top five dive sites uh, for the last three years running. So I'm gonna play you a little video that we just finished, uh, I think two days ago. And this should give you a really good uh, understanding of what it looks like um, in a little bit of a virtual dive. There you can see the, the, uh, the bow, it's absolutely amazing with over a half century of growth on it right now. Just a quick note, the tarpons that you're seeing there, there's uh, regular schools of tarpons. Um, also, sometimes uh, we get lucky and see trigger fish there as well. Um, it's really, really a, a cool dive. Um, occasionally a, a big green moray uh, pops its head out of the, uh, out of the wreck as well.
So I mentioned conservation being a priority uh, earlier, uh, and it really is. And again, this is one of my favorite topics here on uh, on Curacao because the dive industry over the last, uh, I would say, five to seven years has really, really come together um, and supported this initiative. And Project Aware recognized it by using that quote where the community of Curacao are true leaders in the fight to protect what we love. And it really is. Since 2017, more than 10,000 kilos of marine trash uh, or debris, let's say, uh, has been pulled off of uh, approximately 14 to 16 now, I think, uh, dive sites that we've adopted across the island from east to west. And it's a huge achievement uh, because the, the dive operators, the responsible dive operators on the island have really come together and pretty much every week in, in again, normal times, uh, we were out there and pulling trash off the reefs and making sure that they were clean um, on an ongoing basis. That's one of the things that as a, as a diver, you can definitely get involved with. Uh, and you can reach out through Dive Curacao, of course, through me, and I can put you in touch with the operators that are having uh, weekly cleanups. And, you know, with weekly cleanups, there's always, uh, let's call it beverages served afterwards. Uh, there's always uh, something to eat afterwards. There's always a little bit of a celebration afterwards as well. Uh, but here's some, some really good examples, um, again, of what we've been doing. If you guys are photographers, or if there's any photographers in the, uh, in the audience, uh, this is another really good reason to come to Curacao as well. Macro photography. Curacao is not really known for its large pelagics. However, in recent years, um, there has been a, an increase, let's say, um, of uh, yearly sightings of whale sharks, uh, hammerheads, uh, reef sharks up on the eastern side, uh, east point, more particularly also Klein Curacao. Um, also, we've seen, uh, believe it or not, sunfish on the north side of Klein Curacao. Um, there's also been um, uh, humpback whales um, seen just off the coast of the west side as well. So these are all the pelagics that you don't really think that Curacao has, but it, it does. Um, but it, it's not very often. What Curacao is really, really known for is the small stuff. The small stuff on the reef, because the reefs are so incredibly healthy, um, it is a, a treasure um, to be had. So, you know, you can see anything from, you know, frogfish, uh, uh, Peterson cleaner shrimp, lots and lots of Christmas tree worms. I mean, it, it, it's endless. It is absolutely endless to, uh, to film and also to photograph. So I definitely invite you to uh, bring your macro lens, but definitely bring your wide angle as well because the, the wide angle shots are incredible, especially with bait balls. As you can see here, there's are just some examples. So this is a contentious point sometimes. Uh, best shore diving in the Caribbean. Um, yeah, we can honestly say that. You know, we can talk about Bonaire. Let's let's pull the elephant out of the closet and throw it right on the on the uh, floor. You know, the fact is that you know Curacao is a great destination to come here for shore diving. Um, you know, it's not. Um, you know, it's it's more like exploring finding those special points of interest, finding those extra special beaches to, to dive off of that nobody's ever seen or that rarely people ever go to. Uh, like, you know, uh, off the top of my head, I can say like Playa Largo as an example, uh, up on the west side, you know, there's small little coves that you can dive off of that are just absolutely such a pleasure to dive off of. You can have a barbecue if you wanted to you know, things of that nature. You can really get out and explore. But there's so many great, great places to, to shore dive off Curacao. 
Um, and, you know, the most popular beaches, for sure, Casabao, Porta Marie. Uh, these are always great beaches to dive off of. But there's also those little tiny coves that you need to check out. Of course, the night diving uh, by shore is absolutely incredible as well. Just a few extra examples. And yes, I'm just gonna say it right out. Yes, we are one of the, I'm gonna say one of the best destinations in the Caribbean to, to come to. And the reason is very, very simple. There is so many things to do here in Curacao. It's not just about the diving. You come to Curacao for the diving, but you end up leaving with such a broader uh, understanding of Curacao from its, not only its dive sites, its history, its culture, diversity, the, uh, the food, uh, the music. Um, I can go on and on. Really, I, I think Cheryl can tell you that I can talk about Curacao till I'm blue in the face, uh, literally. It, it is such a great destination to come to. Um, and on top of that, we've got world-class dive operators to choose from. And we've also got some of the best Caribbean uh, accommodations uh, that you can find. Um, so I definitely, definitely invite you to, to uh, dream about Curacao. Um, and here's a last video to share with you, um, and then we can get into questions. Hope you've enjoyed the presentation so far. you've enjoyed that and we can start taking some questions if you like thanks brian that was awesome got some great videos there we really enjoyed them a lot of visuals thank you for that um guys for anyone that's kind of new to our platform the reason we had everybody sort of muted and and videos off and things like that is because when you're you know you're um broadcasting from another country sometimes the videos can lag and the sound can lag and we don't want to bog that down and we find if we have everybody's microphones and videos going it does that sometimes but um what we do now is we open the floor up for questions and answers so um the best way to do it is in the chat box you can put your hand up that way it's the, the quickest and you can uh, we, we'll put you on with brian live and you guys can interact with him and each other um otherwise if you're a little bit shy or your microphone doesn't work then you're welcome to put something in the q a box or in the chat box and we'll ask brian those questions for you just to get started brian um while we wait if anyone wants to kind of put their hand up or let us know that you got a question you've got two or three canadians at least in the room i'm kind of going back up the chat box a little bit here um but uh let me see here we have 
Oh, well, you guys can just put your hands up and you can you can say hi to Brian yourself directly, but you do have two or three Canadians in the room. So we'll put you, we'll put those guys on with you there. Um, let me see here. I'm trying to unmute you guys. John Crook, you're unmuted. Uh, and Fritz Mahelsik, I'm sorry, you are <laughs> unmuted. <laughs> um, so you guys are on with Brian. Paul Nielsen's got his hand up. We'll unmute you. I think you were one of the ones saying hi from Canada too. So we're putting you guys on with Brian right now. Bon dia, Brian. It's John Crook. You know the yeah. name. You know who it is. Yeah, absolutely. Good to hear you. Uh, good, good. No, uh, no adventure show this year, I guess. No, no. So the question I've got is, uh, I, like you made a comment earlier about uh, coming up into Canada for Canada and the, the US folks to kind of come down. Canada is now locked in. All, all Caribbean flights have been cancelled till the end of April. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, it, I just thought I'd give you that kind of update, like uh, yeah. that we're locked in big time now. Yeah, yeah. My heart goes out to you all, um, and truly, I hope to see you guys soon. Yeah, me, uh, we, <laughs> I've missed it this year. My trips this year, we've definitely missed. Yeah, you bet. Thanks. Yeah, I am so sorry. I'm so sorry to all our friends that are tuning in from Canada. It's been a really, really rough year. Uh, as someone who's, you know, nothing, our entire livelihood is in the travel industry, obviously. It's been a, a really rough year for everyone resorts and everything else but i have to say that for canadians you're you're so much more locked down than than everyone in the states my heart just goes out to you now i'm originally from the uk and i i know what you're going through there all my family are locked in and i can't get in to see them and they can't get out so um i'm truly sorry about that for our american friends not to kind of twist the knife or whatever for our american friends we can talk about the fact that currently, unless something changes, um, Curacao is open and ready to receive. Um, they're ready to receive visitors, but unfortunately, it's Canada not not allowing people out or be able to get home or what have you. Um, however, Curacao is open and ready to receive guests, at least for those of you that are in the States, and we can get into that a little bit if you want to. But yeah, from my Canadian friends and travel agents and industry pros, I'm so, so sorry because you're, you're in even a worse state than we are. So I'm sorry about that. Um, but I won't go on. Let's see. We had Fritz, you went unmuted. I don't think you got to say what you wanted to say. Uh, currently, Beth Schmidt, you're unmuted. And then Fritz, you're back unmuted again whenever you're ready. Right. I had uh, Fritz here. I had typed in my comment. You mentioned the mega peer and how that's an issue, I guess, when things are normal. What, uh, what does that entail? If you, are you having a, a huge influx of cruise ships during the normal time that's uh, getting in the way of diving? Um, for that particular site, um, the, when the cruise ships are, are in, uh, the Mega Pier holds uh, two, two cruise ships. Um, or one or one large uh, cruise ship, uh, like the new class of cruise ships uh, that are that are currently available, are are around. Um, I think you know somewhere in the region of a 800, 900 feet, something like that. Um, so the the mega pier can hold that, and then when the cruise ships are in, then. Um, the the uh, superior producer is not available to to dive on due to security reasons. However, um, that can be sporadic sometimes, and it, or in certain periods of the year, uh, then it becomes non-available at all. Um, so it it really just depends on the time of the year. Did I answer your question, Fritz? Uh, yes, sir. I just it, just wanted to know it, uh, some of these uh, countries that I travel to, when the cruise ships come in, they pretty much take over the island. And when you said Mega Pier, I was wondering yeah. how how much are they taking over from a no. dive perspective? And um, let's face it, the, the island is a, 
approximately 60 kilometers long um, and at the at the narrowest point it's about five kilometers wide um, in saying that the amount of passengers that come off of the cruise ships in in some cases uh, you, you could be looking at because there's a, a couple of uh, piers on the inside of the Saint Anabai, uh or the or the main channel that comes in through that splits Willemstad into two sections. So Curacao can handle up to uh, five cruise ships at a time. However, um, it really doesn't impact the island from a traffic standpoint that you would ever notice because of the fact that Curacao is a fairly large and really spread out island. Uh, in downtown, yeah, I can honestly say don't go downtown when the cruise ships are in. <laughs> but, you know, if you happen to be on the west end or if you happen to be on the east end or in any of the points in between, it's really, you would never even notice that the cruise ships are in. Great, thank Other you. Can't dive uh, the superior producer. <laughs> <laughs> hi beth hi thanks for the zoom call tonight i appreciate it and i've i've actually learned a lot and i appreciate that okay so united states coming to curacao for the first time i actually have several questions so um are the resorts pretty well prepared to deal with any kind of covid tests that we would need to take to get back on the flights okay absolutely 100 percent. okay very I good yeah, and I've already forwarded that all that information to uh, to Cheryl and her team, so they're very well informed of how to deal with that. Okay, so, information on. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. So for the fun questions, um, so Superior Producer, um, would you? I mean, I know that you can do short a shore dive, but would you recommend that over the boat dive, or how would you approach that? This is my first time there. Um. You know, it really depends on your, and I'm going to be really blunt about it. It really depends on your skill level. Um, if you're very comfortable and it really depends on the, on the weather as well. Uh, normally speaking, um, I would highly suggest doing a boat dive for anybody that is, um, you know, just recently an advanced diver or wants to take it easy not a not really a big fan of some waves or 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 uh, swell gotcha but if you're really not uh if you really don't care about that or if you you're very skilled at understanding how to enter uh, a rocky shoreline because let's face it curacao is not uh, um a sandy beach uh in in a lot of cases there are sandy beaches on curacao but in a lot of cases, it's coral beaches. So, and you've got a lot of sharp edges and so on and so forth. So definitely bring your booties when you come to Curacao. Um, but when you do the, do the entries, maybe you've got some swell. Maybe you've got a little bit of, you know, I've, I've done the Superior uh, lots of times um, from shore and you've got to time it right to go into the water. So you got to be accustomed to that. If you're okay, okay with that, then awesome. You're good to go. Good, good to know. Good advice. Okay, so the sunfish, uh, I had, I, I'm totally shocked by that. But so it was the, this was the only time it was seen there, or I've seen sunfish twice here on Curacao, uh, personally, um, and in both cases, it happens to be off the north side of Klein Curacao, which is about six and a half miles off the mainland of Curacao. Um, it was an absolute surprise to me. I'd only seen uh, sunfish um, before when I happened to be in Galapagos, um, diving personally. And then I am doing some dives in here in Curacao and it's like, what? <laughs> that, no. And they weren't as big. I mean, right. they, they weren't, you know, like, 10 feet uh, from top to bottom, uh, but they were significant, uh, significant enough that you went, wow, this is amazing. Um, and it's just, you know, I bring it up because it, you know, over the years, I've seen pretty much everything here on Curacao to, to be honest. 
um, some only once, some sometimes twice, other times multiple times. But you know, it, it's just, it's an amazing place to, cause you never know what you're gonna see. And sunfish happens to be one of those uh, instances. That's amazing. All right. I'm, I'll cross my fingers for that one. Okay. So, so my last question. Um, so we do plan on running a car and do, you know, just toddling around and doing shore diving. Is there a pretty good infrastructure around the Island to get re tanks refilled? Oh yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Well, what I would honestly, you know, just let's uh, again, I'm being really blunt. Um, Go for it. <laughs> your, your, your best, um, wherever you're going to, and, and Cheryl has a, a good list of accommodations. Um, I would definitely uh, recommend uh, buying a package um, instead of thinking, where am I going to pick up my next tank? Um, and I don't know if that's what you meant, but I'm, I'm just be clear about it because, you know, like in, in the case of Bonaire, where you can, you know, do the drive through and, and so on and so forth. For instance, if you stayed up at All West, um, then you would have that availability. You pick up two, three tanks uh, between, you know, your party, uh, each person, and then you go out and you do your do your dives for the day. Um, and that would be something I would highly recommend you you thinking about as opposed to where to pick up the next tank. Gotcha. I'll look into that. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep. You're welcome. Yeah, and Beth, it, you know, what I would do is look at where you want to stay, what experience you want, all that good stuff um, as far as hotel, proximity to what type of dive sites, how much of what type of diving you want to do, um, how close you want to be to Willemstad or other things, and then you can kind of drill it down. Um, but I'm, I'm with Brian. I would definitely look at a package because then a lot of the time you can set up your boat dives and that can include specialty dives or special sites. Um, and you've got those those days set and you've got that space on the boat set up. And then they'll a lot of the time those packages will come with the ability for shore diving. For those of you that um, you know have been to Bonaire and familiar with that setup, it's not quite like that. But if you work with the dive operator and let them know, hey, I want to do a night dive, shore dive, night dive, or I want to take some tanks around the island and it's outside of hours they'll make the arrangements so that you have access to your gear and the tanks and the weights. So you can go ahead and do shore diving on your own schedule, even outside of shop hours. It just takes a little bit of coordinating with the dive shop. Good to know. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, Brian, I'm going to put you on. Natasha has been uh, waiting very, very patiently and has a couple of questions, but real quick, I had seen, um, we had a manta on our uh, surface interval when I was there. Um, sorry, not our surface interval, our safety stop. So right in, you know, 15 feet of water. Uh, when I know that's kind of unusual too, but um, when we were there, it was June. I know that they're sporadic. I know they're special. You're saying those are special occasions, but would you say that if you think about it, those special things, tend to happen at a certain time of year that you're, if you go a certain time of year, you're more likely to, to encounter a sunfish or a whale or. Yeah, absolutely. Um, my typical encounters with whale sharks as an example, uh, or, or um, I would say, you know, juvenile whale sharks, because they're not, they're definitely not uh, full, full size. But juveniles, uh, they would be more likely in the spring. Um, mantas, well, you know, we've been seeing mantas. I wouldn't say regularly, but I would be saying I would be remiss if I said that they were seasonal. Um, they're you can see them throughout the year. I can't tell you exactly when or where, but. You know, sometimes you, you see them in pairs, sometimes you see them in uh, um, singles, but we also have not just about manta rays, but we also see mobilas as well, um, which are often commonly mistaken for mantas. Um, so you've got the giant mantas that are like really massive, you know, 20 feet tip to tip, black and white, 
but then you see the Mobila, which is a, a smaller version of it, still with the, the map or the, the, I don't know what you call it. Uh, Do you have a right. picture of that uh, at all, Brian? I wish... don't know what, what you're talking about now. So I know the Manta Rays, obviously, but um, what, what else were you talking about? Mobile? Or yeah, what? Mobile is a smaller version. Uh, looks exactly the same, but it's uh, kind of gray uh, on the top. Okay. Like a light gray or a light, uh, a darkish brown. Um, it's, it's okay, so um, uh, can you put that maybe in the chat uh, box or so uh, on how you spell it so I can, uh, well, look it up later? I'm yep. all the way from Australia, by the way. Um, I used to live on the island 20 years ago. I haven't been back, um, unfortunately. Australia has been locked down for quite some time now and will be for some time. But um, being my Dushi island, me Dushi Isla, uh, I'm still looking to come back and and, uh, yeah, explore all those dive sites again. Curacao has been the main reason for me becoming a dive instructor now. Great. Well, yes. So that. whoever is on this um, uh, webinar at the moment, um, honestly, I think I'm one of the examples of one of the best sites ever because I've been diving for 30 years now. Um, and uh, Curacao are still recommended as one of the best dive sites ever. Great. And that's all the way from Australia. And it's not bad diving over here either. Awesome. <laughs> Did you have another question? Uh, no, I actually got uh, that uh, answered already because I was uh, wondering what depth the wreck was, but uh, someone has already answered that. Um, and I think it was at 70 to 100 feet. Now, I don't work in feet. How many meters is that? Uh, you're looking at a, a, if you dig a hole in the sand, you're about 32 meters to the bottom. Say what? <laughs> <laughs> About 32 meters to the bottom. Okay, cool. Yeah. Awesome. And whereabouts is the Mega Pier? Uh, it's right in the heart of uh, Willemstad. It's on the Ultrabanda side. So oh. it's split into two, to two sections, as you know. Uh, yeah. But, uh, on one side, you've got um, um, Punda, and the other side, you've got Ultrabanda. Yep. Um, yeah. You're right now. The Renaissance Hotel, which is the, the main uh, hotel in that area. All right. Awesome. I never dived there and I used to live there. How's that possible? <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Thank you for your patience there, Natasha. I know you had a couple of questions through the presentation, so I appreciate you hanging in there and, and waiting for us to be able to get you on there with Brian. And yeah, that is saying something. If you're living in Australia and uh, and you're ready to come back to dive Curacao, that really is uh, that really is saying something. And and you're right there with Canada as well. I think it's going to be a little while before you get to travel. So I'm so sorry. My heart goes out to you also. Uh, Paul Nielsen, um, we are trying to unmute you. Um, let me see if we can successfully do that. Bear with me for just a second. I still have Beth Schmidt unmuted. I'm not sure if you had another question. Paul Nielsen and John Pappas, both of you are unmuted and you've both got your hands up. So uh, whoever wants to jump in first, you're both on with Brian. Family here. Hey, Brian. Hey, how's it going? It's snowing here in Michigan. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. <laughs> hey, we just have a couple questions because we missed you guys for the last couple years. And... Oh. We're anxious to come back. Um, is there a quarantine going on if we were to come this year? No, ma'am. Uh, no. It's very straightforward just to address that. You can fly into Curacao uh, as long as you've got a negative PCR test uh, produced and uploaded to the uh, Curacao Tourist Board website. And Cheryl has that. Again, Cheryl has that uh, link if you like. Um, or you can reach out to me, whatever. Okay. But you need to upload the, the negative PCR test result within 72 hours of arrival 
uh, or departor, departure of the United States. And then once you do that, you can freely go around uh, Curacao as long as you're uh, maintaining all the protocols that we have here in place, like social distancing, like wearing your face mask uh, when entering a, a grocery store or any other closed space, et cetera, et cetera. But just to be clear, there is absolutely no uh, quarantine here on Curacao. In fact, we had zero um, positive results as of yesterday. I don't know what today is, sorry, uh, but today uh, we, we had no. That's awesome. The nope. other question awesome. I had real quick was, um, are you seeing a, a regrowth and a rebirth of all the fish since the lion fish hunting is um, on its way and going good? Yeah, in the most popular dive sites, um, and as you know, and I can speak to you specifically with this, but for, for the general purpose, for the most popular dive sites, um, you can absolutely see um, more people uh, or, or more fish, more life. Um, that is, you know, it, it's like, you know, I don't know how to explain this. When I first took a dive after about six months of being, you know, in the quarantine and everything like that, and all of a sudden it was like, wow. And then I, I don't honestly say that it's a direct attributed to the lionfish. I would say that, you know, the environment itself or, or evolution has kind of taken care of that. We, our, um, our lionfish hunters that are on the island have certainly, you know, taken, taken away the, the lionfish that are in the most densely dove areas. Um, however, I think it's really important to understand that in, even in those places that have not been dove that often, they are absolutely incredible places to go diving. Um, you know, the, the coral reefs are, are alive. They're like on fire. It's really, really awesome to see. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's good news. John, do you have any more questions? No, that's it. Just we'll see you in November. We'll hope to see you in November. Looking forward to it. I hope. <laughs> Beer's on us. <laughs> Wait a minute. Don't know about that. Wait a minute. <laughs> no, no, no. Rhonda said it. <laughs> okay. All right, well, you have a good one, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Looking forward to it. Bye. Thanks, guys. Well, fingers crossed for you guys for November. I hope uh, I hope that we have got this as well and truly behind us as we possibly can by then. But, I mean, right now it is, um, you know, it is positive. Curacao is, is literally hosting people right now, so... Uh, every reason to kind of hold on hope that November won't be an issue for you guys. Uh, for those of you that are wanting to look a little bit more as Brian covered it, um, as, as Brian covered, there, for, you, for people from America uh, for, or from other countries that are allowing you to travel, you can travel into Curacao right now with just a PCR test. It's 72 hours from when the flight departs, for those of you that are in the States, the flight that departs from the US going into Curacao. So if you're an American, for example, from Miami, that's when your 72 hour clock starts ticking. Um, recently in the news, you may have seen the, the new requirement that to come back to the United States, you have to take a test to come home. Uh, that one can be PCR or antigen, which is rapid, taken three days before that flight back into the US. All of the resorts and operators out there and tourist boards have done an absolutely magnificent job helping make that requirement. And the same for our Canadian friends, you know, when you are lifted and able to travel again, for you guys, it's been PCR test. Uh, for the United States, it's right now it's rapid or PCR, but it is very convenient for you to make that requirement. A lot of the hotels are actually bringing the test to you and there's other sites around the island as well. Um, some places are even covering the cost 
of that test or making it very, very affordable for you. So for those of you that are thinking about getting out of here and going soon, um, in both directions, it can be easily met. For those of you that don't know us very well, on our website, deepblueadventures.com, in the top left-hand corner, there's a COVID resource page. If we have resorts that are listing their protocols, we have those there. And we also have currently open destinations for uh, US travelers, seeing as we are US-based. Those have the official links, as well as a summary of what you need. So you can go through, and as Brian said, you have to fill out a form for the Curacao uh, Tourism and Immigration Board. Those links are right there as well. So whether you're using us or not, um, please use our COVID resource page as a reference to see what it is that you would require and, and link through to the most up-to-date information, because that does change. Yeah. Um, Paul Kader Deedon, you are on. Um, hi, Brian, my brother. Good to see you, man. Hey, brother. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Good to see you. Uh, I just, I didn't necessarily need to be on. I just wanted to find out how one of my favorite dive sites in the world was looking. The mushroom forest has always been at, at the very top of my list. How is it looking? Well, you know, I went out diving there about, I think it was last month um and it was looking stellar but you know i took a different approach paul and this is something that maybe everybody would be interested in is that there i just posted a, a new video uh for black sand rec um so black sand beach and black sand rec is is right next to um to mushroom forest um so it's the first site after you leave santa cruz so you got Black Sand, this awesome dive site called uh, Black Sand Beach, Black Sand Wreck. And then you've got the forest mooring for Mushroom Forest. And then you've got this amazing site called the, the Blue Room, uh, as you very well know. Well, the Blue Room is one of those essential experiences that everybody should uh, definitely dive into. <laughs> Anyways, the um, I took... The approach from leaving Black Sand Wreck, dove into Black Sand Wreck and took the approach of leaving Black Sand Wreck and then diving towards the first mooring at um, Mushroom Forest. And then continuing on because the current was such that I could then pass the first mooring and then continue on. And I got to tell you, Paul, it was epic. Oh, man, I got to try that. It was epic. Um, I also have to say that the the temperatures throughout the um, the fall were were quite hot, um, and mushroom forest is quite susceptible to coral bleaching and and so on and so forth. So past the first mooring and and going towards the blue room, there was definitely some. Um, Sadly, there was some uh, coral bleaching happening, but it wasn't uh, like it was probably 10 years ago uh, where we had, you know, a, a great deal of mortality. Um, but a lot of that is regrown, like probably 75% of the mortality uh, that we suffered 10 years ago has all come back. So wow. it, is, it is just... You know, it's it's not mushroom forest like it was 50 years ago, but it is freaking awesome. That yeah, it's just such an ethereal, wonderful place. I just thoroughly enjoyed it. I went there I, as many times as I could every time I, I went to Curacao, which sadly was a very long time ago. I need to get back, man. We, we got to work on that. Stop telling me it's such a long time ago because I know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's an epic dive because you do the whole dive at like 50 and 60 feet. You take it nice and slow, nice and easy. And it's such a beautiful experience because yeah. you're just right on the edge doing the whole dive. And man, if the current is, is up, man, you could do a whole flyby. Uh, and I'm looking at your picture as a flyby. Uh, <laughs> But you could do the whole flyby right from right from Black Sand Rack all the way up to the corner of the Blue Room, which is right on the corner of Sponge Forest. 
So you could literally dive three dive sites uh, when you dive mushroom forest. It's it's just an amazing. Wow. Dive. Cool. Well, yeah. I'm glad I'm glad that uh, that the uh, corals are coming back after the bleaching event. Oh yeah, but that was that was a long time ago, right? So I mean, it's amazing to see it. It's amazing to see it come back. You know, that's that's the the great thing about Curacao is there's such a great wash effect that the the corals are are continually propagating. Um, you know, it's really special. Sorry to take this really long or or short question into a long answer. No, that's okay. I, I'm I'm grateful for all the information. It it, it were it, they, it was almost all stuff that I didn't know. So that's great. And I'm I'm definitely trying that approach to the dive next time we're there. I think I'll take you on that dive myself. I I, I would I would be I would be sad if you did not. <laughs> we definitely yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that. Cool, Paul. Thank you. Hey, good seeing you, man. Be safe. All right, if anybody else has any questions, everybody's hands down right now. So um, if anybody else has any more questions you can think of, this is your last chance. We're happy to keep going. Officially it's over eight, but we're quite happy to sit here and chat away about Curacao or general travel, whatever you want to talk about. Um, but if everybody is done, we don't want to keep you here. So if anyone has anything else, if you would pop it now in your um, chat box or raise your hand, and we will be glad to answer that for you. I'll give everyone just a minute to uh, come up with their questions. And by the way, Brian Beth Schmidt says, really great info. Thank you so much. Um, awesome. <laughs> oh, there we go. And I'm just going to say, I personally, you know, I we have Brian here. You might think he's impartial, but I'm going to assume that he spent 14 years plus of his life uh, choosing to live and dive in Curacao for a good reason. Um, but I sell all over the world and, and I've been to multiple places. I'm very lucky, very blessed to, to have that. And, and personally, I can genuinely say that Curacao has a piece of my heart. As somebody that comes from uh, England and, and spent her youth and younger years going around Europe and then being a diver and absolutely in love with the Caribbean, it is, it is honestly, I know I said at the beginning, it is, but it is a perfect marriage. And we, we talked a little bit about, um, you know, the food. Brian talks about the food. I can tell you honestly that the restaurants, if you're a foodie, oh. it, they're just fabulous, fabulous options. Um, history, museums, culture, there's jazz festivals, different types of music events going on all year round. There's coral spawning. There's just, man, you just, you can keep going and going all the different things that Curacao has. And if, if you've got non-divers um, that are going along with you, snorkelers, things like that, there's just so much to do and see on the island. You're, you're definitely going to run out of time, even over multiple trips before you ever run out of things to do for every generation, depending on whether they're an avid diver or a land lover. That's just my personal opinion. So, <laughs> other than that, I have nothing to say about Curacao. <laughs> well, you're absolutely right. I'm I'm so incredibly biased um, for Curacao. I mean, for obvious reasons, I did choose Curacao to live on, um, but it was act by accident. You know, it was like one of those things where you develop or you wake up in the morning and you've got this incredible passion for, for, for diving here on Curacao, because all of a sudden it's not just about the diving here on Curacao. It's about everything else that goes along with it. It's, you know, the, the biggest question that you receive that I receive, why Curacao, you know, because Curacao offers diving offers food offers history offers all these other things and we can talk about this again till we're blue in the face but you know it, it's so i'm enamored by it i i have a passion for for this island um because there's so many things to do and there's really just never enough time to do them uh, it, it's very special absolutely Absolutely, I agree. And by the way, just in case there is anyone signing off, Corey, I see your hand up there, so we're going to pop you on. But I know for eight o'clock, some people are bouncing off. Um, Carrie and Laurie from our company are actually going to be in Curacao next month. 
So we're going to be sharing a lot on Facebook Live and things like that. Um, live from Curacao, they'll share honestly, because we're always honest about our experiences, honestly, from getting the PCR test, arriving, getting there, and then they're going to be staying at a couple of different places on different ends of the island. And they'll share their experiences along with you live from them multiple times. Just kind of check our Facebook. We'll also be sharing experiences um, through our other social media channels uh, and emails and things like that when we get back. So uh, Carrie and Laurie, one of you can jump on. I can't remember exactly what date you're going, if you wanted to share that date real quick. March 13th to the 20th. Okay, so March 13th through the 20th. Um, if anybody is going, Carrie, while I have you on here, uh, just for those of you that are bouncing off, our next week and still dream is going to be when? No, that was not fair. <laughs> uh, let me look. I'm sorry. It's at the, it's February 23rd, and we're going back to the Philippines with Annalau Resort. Okay, so for those of you just, I don't want to confuse things. Um, we will be on February 23rd. For those of you that are leaving, I know some people are saying they got to go. Goodbye. So um, we will be we will be available uh, for We Can Still Dream. Um, Robin, no, Philippines is not open right now. Um, we are trying to share destinations that are open, but this is we've been doing this since April, just a way to get people out of their living rooms so they can't travel. So that's why we're called We Can Still Dream, and we're we're dreaming about Annalau as well. So no, it's not open, but we're just going to hopefully transport you there. Um, no, sorry, Robin, for you for confusion. We're going to have a We Can Still Dream webinar. Uh, on February 23rd. So we'll be kind of just talking about that. But Carrie and Lori will actually be traveling physically in real life <laughs> to Curacao on March 13th. And from there, we will be sharing our experiences live. I hope that clears things up. Um, Corey, sorry, thank you for waiting. We have you on. Can you tell me, um... I hope I'm not too confused, but can you tell me what resorts are near you or are affiliated with you? And what are the, the logistics from getting to, from my room to the dive boat? Um, I think that's a good question for Cheryl. So Corey, uh, Brian is, I don't know how you want to get, Brian is a representative of all different dive operations on the island. He's like a, a go-to guru for the island. He um, does work side by side uh, with a number of dive operations on the island as we do. So he doesn't have a physical location. He can tell you where he's close to. Both he and I um, would work with you on establishing what kind of experience you want, what kind of hotel you want, what you're looking for, what type of diving, how much diving, et cetera, and then hopefully match you appropriately with the right dive operation and resort. But he doesn't have one particular location that he is affiliated with to answer that question. Does that, okay, is that good? Brian, does that yeah. sum it up for you? Yep. Thanks, Cheryl. You're welcome. So, Corey, there's multiple ones here. Um, there's been some multiple dive operations and hotels on as well. Uh, from here, Ocean Encounters is represented. All, uh, sorry, All West Dive or Go West Diving is represented. It really depends where you want to stay on the island. If you're looking for an all-inclusive experience, if you're looking for a laid-back, more chill, smaller hotel, if you're looking for something in the West End, uh, really just depends what you're looking for. But there's multiple representations here tonight. Corey, uh, I think you muted. Did that answer all your questions? Or you're welcome to. to yeah, ask I was. I was confused. I wasn't sure if he was that he was representing multiple dive operators or if he was one specific operator. So I, I was a little confused with that. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, we've got Brian here tonight um, because he is impartial. He's just uh, he represents the island and he's got a lot of experience all over. So he's uh, while he's partial to Curacao, he's impartial as far as who you should go diving with. He's more representing the island in general and what would be the best experience for a diver, depending on what they're looking for and their personal experience. 
Okay, thank you. Thank You're you, Courtney. All right, guys. Well, it looks like we've wrapped things up. Uh, it looks like everybody has had their questions answered. If anybody, if something occurs to you, uh, once we hang up this evening, you're welcome to shoot us an email at info at deepblueadventures.com um, or through our Facebook page, through Facebook Messenger. Uh, Brian, I think, is your email Brian at divecuracao.com or, or is it a little bit different? Brian at divecuracao.info. Okay, there we go. Brian at divecuracao.info. So you can also reach out to Brian um, on his email as well if there's something you think about later. Uh, please give us a couple of days and this webinar will be up on our YouTube channel. And uh, you will also be able to find a link to that on our website. So if you want to watch it again or you have anybody you want to share it with, you'll be welcome to um, find that on our YouTube page or on through our website as well. And Robin, I know we've got a lot of conversations going on back and forth of, of, about your travels and things like that and locations that are open and closed. Um, so I would love to speak to you. We, we can reach out and continue this by email. I would love to chat to you a little bit and I can also share with you what I know as far as current destinations that are open or closed to, to help you out there. And if anybody else can think of anything, I will be happy to uh, answer your questions. Uh, Brian will as well. And as I said, please tune into our Facebook and our website um, in mid-March, where Carrie and Laurie will actually be getting to share this with you live.